The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me round among them, and behold, there were very many upon the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And as I looked, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no spirit in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the Spirit, prophecy, son of man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O Spirit, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the Spirit came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and raise you from your graves. O my people, I will bring you home into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, take a stick and write on it, for Judah and the children of Israel associated with him. Then take another stick and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with him, and join them together into one stick, that they may, that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am about to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel associated with him. And I will join with it the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, that they may become one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the sons of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from all sides, and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. And they shall no longer be two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves any more with, with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions, but I will save them from all their backslidings, in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances, and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall dwell in the land where your fathers dwelt, that I have, that I gave to, to my servant Jacob, they and their children, and their children's children, shall dwell there forever. And David my servant shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will bless them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I the Lord sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is in the midst of them forevermore. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, 
and I will bring you forth and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes. Beth Togermah, from the uttermost parts of the north, with all his hordes, many people are with you. Be ready to keep ready, you and all the hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land where people were gathered from many nations upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the nations, and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many people with you. Thus says the Lord God, On that day thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme, and say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will fall upon the quiet people who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having no bars or gates, to seize spoil and carry off plunder, to assail the waste places which are now inhabited, and the people who were gathered from the nations, who have gotten cattle and goods, who dwell at the center of the earth, Sheba and Dedan, and all the merchants of Tarshish, and all its villages, will say to you, Have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your hosts to carry off plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to seize great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy, and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely, you will bestir yourself and come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the north, you and many peoples with you all of them riding on horses, a great host, a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel, like a cloud covering the land. In the latter days I will bring you against my hand, that the nations may know me. When through you, O Gog, I vindicate my holiness before your eyes. Thus says the Lord God, Are you he of whom I spoke in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who in those days prophesied for years, that I would bring you against them. But on that day, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, my wrath will be roused. For in my jealousy and in my blazing wrath, I declare on that day, there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep on the ground and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall quake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the cliffs shall fall, and every wall shall tumble to the ground. I will summon every kind of terror against Gog, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. With pestilence and bloodshed, I will enter into judgment with him. And I will rain upon him and his hordes, and the many peoples that are with him, torrential rains and hailstones, fire and brimstone. So I will show my greatness and my holiness, and make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. A slip on the pavement is better than a slip of the tongue, so the downfall of the wicked will occur speedily. An ungracious man is like a story told at the wrong time, which is continually on the lips of the ignorant. A proverb from a fool's lips will be rejected, for he does not tell it at its proper time. A man may be prevented from sinning by his poverty, so when he rests, he feels no remorse. A man may lose his life through shame or lose it because of his foolish look. A man may for shame make promises to a friend and needlessly make him an enemy. A lie is an ugly blot on a man. It is continually on the lips of the ignorant. A thief is preferable to a habitual liar but the lot of both is ruin. The disposition of a liar brings disgrace, and his shame is ever with him. He who speaks wisely will advance himself, and a sensible man will please great men. Whoever cultivates the soil will heap up his harvest, and whoever pleases great men will atone for justice. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise, 
Like a muzzle on the mouth, they avert reproofs. Hidden wisdom and unseen treasure, what advantage is there in either of them? Better is the man who hides his folly than the man who hides his wisdom. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort. Be unfailing in patience and in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, enduring suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful in serving me. Tychius I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one took my part. All deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength to proclaim the word fully, that all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. G Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesophorus. Erastus remained at Corinth. Trophimus, I left ill at Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Prudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Today, St. Paul tries to instill in us a sense of urgency because a time is coming when people will no longer listen. They will flock to a teacher who says only what pleases them. Reading this passage might make us anxious, as Paul's warning seems to describe our own time, a time in which dialogue between people who disagree is disappearing. Let us not despair of our own time or of our fellow brothers and sisters, because many generations have passed between Paul's time and our own, in which the church has been tested and preaching has seemed vain. Let us keep the story from Ezekiel before us as an image of hope, because God can renew even a nation that seems completely lifeless and dead. And how is this resurrection achieved? It is, though, it is through the voice of Ezekiel preaching to a pile of dry bones. Let us not be discouraged, therefore, because however difficult our witness in the world is, we are preaching to the living and not the dead. So until we have finished running our own race, let us be urgent in our ministry as Paul recommends. Do you ever let a sense of defeat discourage you in sharing your faith with others?